very often high school students tend to think that mathematics is a done and dusted subject and the truth is it's far from that access to resources was a bit of a problem you had to go the extra mile to prove that you know things weren't happening to you just because you were a woman Hi, I am Deep Dotto. Welcome to the ICTS podcast. Today, we have a special guest. Professor Sujata Ramdurai is a mathematician renowned for her contributions to the Iwasawa theory. She has won several awards, notably the Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award in 2004, the ICTP Ramanujan Prize in 2006, the Krieger Nelson Prize in 2020, and the Padma Shri in 2023. She currently holds the Canada Research Chair in the Department of Mathematics at the University of British Columbia in Canada. Welcome Professor Ramdurai. Can you tell us what inspired you to pursue a career in mathematics? I think it was abstraction from a very young age. I liked this idea that you only needed to understand in order to do well in that subject. And uh, you know, it was always uh, clear that once you understood then you did not have to fear the mathematics monthly test and so on. and uh, mathematics was also highly valued in society if you did well in mathematics then you were to be appreciated everybody said oh they got full marks she got full marks in mathematics and so on right so once you do well and you get these positive inputs then it continues and you do better that's my feeling can you tell us about your particular field of study okay i work in a broad area of what's called algebraic number theory and initially i started out when i did my phd it was more in the niche in the algebra um, and gradually i moved to number theory and its algebraic number theory and within algebraic number theory i work in an area which is called iwasawa theory this was started by the japanese mathematician iwasawa in the 1960s in order to understand what are called number fields and elliptic curves over number fields a whole range of questions related to those mm-hmm. Is there a key takeaway or an insight for high school students from your field of study, your work? Maybe a pleasant fact or an idea or a concept that is interesting for students. I think very often high school students tend to think that mathematics is a done and dusted subject. And the truth is it's far from that. So for instance, one of the examples I always like to give is, you know, take this equation x squared plus y squared equals z squared. then we know that this has infinitely many integer solutions this is just pythagoras theorem you know you have lots of pythagoras triples but then you change it to x to the power n plus y to the power n equals z to the power n where n is greater than or equal to 3 then the solutions become very and it was conjectured 350 years ago that the solutions are the obvious quote and quote obvious ones where x y z should be equal to 0 that is one of them should be 0 and this was left unknown for 350 years and in fact so many subjects in algebraic number theory came out of trying to understand how to prove this uh, or understand this phenomena and this is now today it's called fermat's last theorem you know which has proved only at the end of the last century right so i think this is a key takeaway that students should remember that mathematics is exciting because it has lots of unsolved problems which later find applications not just within mathematics but also in other areas Have you faced any unique challenges as a woman in the field of mathematics? I wouldn't say so, not in my early years, not in my school, not in my college. I got married very young, not not that my parents forced me, it was out of choice. I met somebody who I liked and my parents said, "Look, if you are seeing this person, then you better get married." And so I got married when I was still in undergraduate college and uh, it helped to have a very supportive family, mm. both before marriage and then my husband who has been a great supporter and in fact he was the one i mean during my 12th when i was debating be- between going to professional courses like engineering because that was the time that engineering was getting to be very fashionable computer science was getting to be fashionable and so on but i also liked mathematics and i was dithering between those two and then my husband strongly supported my to be husband he was not then my husband yet he supported me strongly saying look everybody does engineering if you like mathematics why don't you pursue mathematics so it's those kind of supportive environments but that helped uh, in research when i was at tifr i can't say that it was completely supportive okay except for a small subset my advisor was professor parimala raman who is uh, 
very well known mathematician herself and her advisor my grand advisor was professor sridharan who was a great believer in the capabilities and potential of women he is he was one of those early pioneers under whom many women right. graduated in india and so on so i think it helps to have that kind of not patronizing but supportive right you know and i since by then i was a mother i was commuting 35 kilometers each way and uh, you know those days i had to take a train and then if you miss the train you know 537 i still remember the virar local i would take from church gate to <laughs> andheri and so on and before that when i was in bombay uh, it was a new place i moved from bangalore to bombay and access to resources was a bit of a problem of course tfr is fanta- was fantastic in that way and i sure it still is you know in the kind of library access that it had and so on and people who stayed there had some advantages because they could spend all evening all nights discussing night seminars you know those kind of thing but in a way i think i was also fortunate not to get caught in that because it also gave me the mental space to think of other things you know because it can add to its own pressure when you are within a closed echo chamber everybody is talking about who is better who is not better all those kind of comparisons which i think you know i don't know if things have changed now i have been far removed from the indian system for a long time but that kind of there is a certain certain toxicity and judgmental behavior which is not always beneficial Statistically, mathematics is still a male-dominated field. There are more men than women, and young women who are interested in pursuing mathematics as a career may be intimidated by this perception. What advice would you give them? I I think they should just follow their hearts and follow their passion. It helps to have a strongly supportive environment, and I think talking to the parents, for instance, that would help. And if a youngster is married, then talking to the married that to the extended family and also enabling lateral entries somebody can decide i still love mathematics at age of 35 and might want to come and learn more and so on and those things are possible today with technology and that's the advantage of mathematics you don't need a lab mm. you know you need a book you need a pencil you need somebody to talk to which today can be done remotely so those kind of networks and mentorships should be encouraged how important are meetings like the inaugural meeting of asian and oceanian women in mathematics held at icpos very important and in fact i was just talking to a few others this network should sort of be branched out it shouldn't remain a single network it should become a tree mm. you know connect to other networks and then explore the possibility of you know joint supervision because everybody is busy and then joint supervision can also help a student by way of getting varied perspectives you know rather than being limited to one supervisor and so on. so of course all this calls for coordination and also at any level i think there should also be this um the individual contacts how they get along mm. you know i don't want a student to be caught between two different advisors who each of whom think that the other is handling the student and so on so there should be uh, co mentoring and these possibilities should be looked into and how do you today balance your responsibilities as a professor as a, as an academic with other personal commitments okay now i have almost i have hardly any personal commitments now i have a grown up daughter grandchildren and so on so i don't get to spend as much time with my grandchildren as i would like to i see but otherwise it's not been difficult it was more difficult when my phd time any day care available but again i was lucky in the sense that i lived in an extended family i lived with my mother in law and her mother in law and So there were challenges, but we worked out a modus vivendi in some sense. So, on the one hand, I didn't have to worry about who will look after my child because I knew that she was safe in a home environment. What will happen if the daycare closes? But on the other hand, I think it would have been greatly beneficial if there were more uh, daycare facilities at the place of work. You know, things like that. And I'm glad to see those things are changing now. Did you face any systemic barrier? I won't say systemic barriers but I would say yes you had to go the extra mile to prove that you know things weren't happening to you just because you were a woman I see right in fact I can tell you very candidly 2004 there was the ICM in uh, Switzerland in Zurich okay 
and at that time that was the first time that this women in mathematics was being talked about in europe and there was one afternoon there's a, a person called eva bayer and who was you know who used to feel that there are systemic barriers for women and this should be changed in europe huh? and then she organized a session on women in mathematics and you know what can we do about that and so on and i remember you know the few of us from india who were there wondering whether we should be seen in a place like that because then what will our male colleagues will they come back and tell us oh no you are part of that you expect special treatment because you are a woman you know so it's damned if you do damned if you don't you know that kind of systemic attitudes i would say i won't say systemic barriers systemic attitudes and i think that still persists in a large way would you say the same for affirmative action no affirmative action i mean let's just look at the number of um, mental health issues in iit right you know i know of people we read that all the time in the newspapers right how people and this from what i read in the west it's the same uh, meaning among the indian diaspora in the west you know you face systemic challenges because they feel that you got there unfairly because of affirmative action and i know of cases where people have got where they have without affirmative action but they happen to be from those um sections of society and then the assumption is that they are where they are because they are from that section so it goes against the grain of uh, affirmative action so i think there should be this larger education in india about social justice mm -hmm. and how can how that can make a better place for everybody mm -hmm. rather this sense of entitlement and non entitlement